Right, 6.41, how do you know that the photographs that you post on social media aren't being stolen? It's a good question. Uh, it's easy to copy images, click of a button, uh, and set up fake accounts online. And that phenomenon is known as catfishing. Despite not being a criminal offence, police forces are hearing more and more complaints about it. The BBC's Jennifer Myrons, a victim herself, investigates. I don't know, you feel dirty in a sense. I know you, I didn't do anything to them, but I just felt like my privacy had been, you know, taken away from me. Bongi Missy Manga found someone pretending to be her on Instagram. Well, when I went on to it just to look, you know, investigate for myself, I found that they'd only followed all my male friends and basically they were just being flirty or do you want to get to know me better, etc. And what, what made it worse is the fact that my Instagram is private, so it has to be someone I know. I'm Jen and I'm a BBC journalist and I had no idea what catfishing was until it happened to me. I had private messages in my Facebook inbox from men who thought that they'd struck up a relationship with me in an adult chat room. It turns out that someone was using my name and photos they'd taken off my Facebook. It's identity theft in the same way you know, stealing a passport or, or a driver's license is. Joe Richard's friend spotted his photos on Tinder, but under a different name and sexuality. It was kind of an immediate shock. It was completely uh, portraying me completely differently to, yeah. to who I am. That's distressing and that's unknown to me, which is even more distressing. Instagram and Tinder removed the fake accounts. Catfishing can be used in grooming, fraud and romance scams, but the act of pretending to be someone else isn't illegal. There's obviously the people that get entrapped and think they're speaking to somebody who is not that person. But there are also victims who have their images taken and used for catfishing purposes. And that's obviously quite frightening because a lot of the time you may not even know that your photograph or details of your life are being used by somebody else. A review of social media and the law by the House of Lords in 2014 found there was enough legislation to cover online crime. There's no specific laws or legislation around catfishing, but there are other offences such as you know fraud or deception, which may may be invoked if someone's pretending to be somebody else online. If we have specific legislation, it can make our job easier to to prove or disprove what's occurring. Dr. Daria Cuss is an expert on the psychology of catfishing. Reasons for why people may engage in catfishing are very varied. They may create a, an online persona that is an idealised self, so a better version of themselves. They make themselves prettier, cleverer, smarter. They don't necessarily see um, the face of a person that they may be engaging with and therefore they can't really feel that empathy when they see that they're actually upsetting somebody, they're hurting somebody. Later this year, the government will release a white paper setting out new laws around internet crimes, but it's not known if catfishing is going to be one of them. So where does that leave people like me, who have already fallen victim? So it's frightening for those individuals whose photos are stolen to know what, what is being done to those photos. And this, of course, is uh, leading to anxiety problems. This can be quite severe in terms of traumatising the individual. I'm, I'm really surprised now now I think about it, that it's not a crime. I'm just really paranoid. I don't trust people the way I used to. It's completely different now. Jennifer Myron's BBC News.